Okay, Bezos Hashem, today's daf is Msechta Baba Metzia, daf Kuf Yud, Kuf Te Zayin, Kuf Yud Zayin, and we're going to begin from daf Kuf Yud Vav Amid Beis. Kuf, Kuf Te Zayin Amid Beis. Here we go. 116b by the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Habayis Valia, a person, one person, uh, a, a, a one person rent the attic of the house, okay? A man owns a house, and the person rented the attic of the house. It says, let's say, uh, let's say they got a hole, the, the, uh, the, the upstairs collapsed. The ain't balabayas, Roysalisakin, beautiful thing. The upstairs, uh, the upstairs roof or whatever it was became, uh, uh, the upstairs uh, aliyah became uninhabitable. Okay, they got a vacate order. So then, Haraya Balalia Yorid. Here we go. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Lewis. We just began. We uh, hi, hi, Lewis. Yes, hi. We just began. So, a guy who's renting the top, a, a two floor house, and the top floor is being rented by a, a tenant, and it got became inhabitable. Uninhabitable. So, so therefore, it's up to the landlord to fix it, but he doesn't want to fix it. So then the Mishnah says, Then the guy who lives upstairs can go move in to the to the landlord's apartment on the first floor. Until he corrects, fixes it. Rabbi Yaisi says, it depends what's wrong with it. If the, the there there were two parts to make the roof of the second floor, the roof of the first floor, which is the floor of the second floor. First, you put down the roofing, the like the board, the floorboards, and then you have to put down a pitch, you know, like a cement to hold it all together. So Rabbi Yaisi says that they both have to chip in to fix that. The guy who lives on the bottom floor, the landlord, he gives the floorboards. He gives the, the boards the, and the ha'elyoin, but the one on top, he has to give some aziva, the, the plaster, to, to cover the floors because he's walking on that floor. So that benefits him. And the floorboards itself the, is, is a roof for, this, for the first floor. That benefits the one on the bottom floor. So that's how they chip in to fix the, to fix the roof of the, the the roof that's in between the first floor and the second floor. So the Mishnah said that if it became uninhabitable, there was like something collapsed on the attic, you could move in to the where? Into the landlord's apartment. So the Gemara says, how much of a how much of a hole did the first did the second floor open up so that the first floor is, so that gives the right of the tenant to move into the landlord. Rav says, Beruba, Rav says, of most of the floor opened up. If most of the floor broke, then you can you move down to the second floor. The landlord has a small apartment for himself. Where is he to move in? Yeah, he moves in. He just knocks on the, the landlord, says, I can't live upstairs. There's a hole in the floor. There's, on most of the floor, I can't walk on the second floor. So I'm moving into your apartment. Shmuel, Amar, Shmuel says, even if there's a hole, a fourth fachim, even just a little hole, a fourth fachim, ready gives the right to the tenant to move into the landlord's apartment. Says the Gemara, Rav, Rav, Rav says, the most of the floor has to open up. If it's just fourth fachim, you can't, there's no right to move into the landlord's apartment. Because if this floor, if let's say the floor opened up by fourth fachim, so therefore, let's say you can't, put the refrigerator in that uh, second floor apartment. So you put it into the first floor apartment and Odom Darb Lamata Nobody has a problem living in a duplex where you you half of your items on the on the ground floor and half on the on the upper floor. That's the opinion of Rav. Shmuel Rav Shmuel says it becomes uninhabitable even if there's a hole of Fort Vachem. Why? Because nobody can live half on the bottom and half on top. And therefore, and therefore, 
He doesn't want his refrigerator in the fridge in the landlord's apartment. He wants everything to be perfect in his apartment. So therefore, he has a right to move in to the landlord's apartment. Now, the Gemara says, what was written on the rental agreement? Hey, Chedami. If the if the rental agreement said I'm renting you only this second floor apartment, Azda. So once the second floor apartment is is not usable, so that's it. It's too, it's, it's it's a bad luck on the renter. Ella de Oma le Aliastam. If you said I'm renting you a second floor apartment, but you didn't specify which one, so then the the renter. The, the landlord has to provide another apartment. He has to provide another second floor apartment uh, to make up for the one that's not usable. But he doesn't that doesn't give the renter a right to move in to the landlord's apartment on this on the first floor. Amarava, Rava said, Our mission is talking about a specific case. The Amale, where the landlord wrote in the rental agreement, Aliyazu Shari Maskilach. This second floor apartment that I'm renting to you, ki salka salka bahada. When you go up, you go up through 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 my apartment. Uh, when you ki salka you salka bahada. When it's around, you go you go into that second floor apartment. V'chinach is, but if it if it somehow collapses, chus bahada, you can live in the. First floor apartment. So he wrote the favorite. She wrote clearly that in case something happens to the second floor apartment, come live in the first floor apartment. Says the Gemari Hachi, if that's the case of our mission, my Lemembro, what is the novelty? I mean, that seems pretty straightforward in the in the in the lease agreement. Alamaravashi Ravashi says this is what it's written. The Amalay it's written like this: Aliyazush al Gabi Bayazer Animaska Lecha. The the lease agreement said this. A second floor, which is on this house, I'm renting to you. So why did you have to say that this uh, second floor apartment, which is on on top of this house, I'm renting to you? Of course, it's on top of a house. Uh, how would it be a second floor apartment? So the fact that he wrote Al Gabi Bayezer, the Shabit Bayez La he 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 made the house responsible for the second floor, that in case the second floor becomes uninhabitable, he's almost like saying, I'm giving you a right to rent the first floor, you could come in to the first floor apartment. And it's the same story. Man said to his friend, this vine, which is leaning on this peach tree, Ani so the vine depends on the peach tree, v'neekar haparsik, and somehow the peach tree got uprooted. Oh, so but he he when he when he rented it, when he sold it, he actually made uh, made it in the contract that what's unique about this vine is that it leans on a peach tree, and now the peach tree is not there. And this story came before Rabchia. But Almighty said, "Chayev ata lahamad loy parsek." You have to uh, provide another peach tree called Zmam Shandos Kayama. As long as the vine is still intact, uh, the peach tree takes the responsibility to holding up the vine. And so, therefore, it's not if the peach tree is not there, you have to provide a new one. Same thing over here. The, the what holds up the second floor apartment is the first floor apartment, and he's he made this first floor apartment totally responsible for the second floor apartment. So if the second floor apartment becomes uninhabitable, that gives the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it gives a right to the tenant to move down to the first floor apartment. So he asked the question, we go to Kufi Zayim al When you move down to the first floor apartment, what's the din? Does the landlord have to move out? When he lives, does he move in by himself? And the landlord has to find a new place to live. Both of them could live in the same apartment. The Amale, because the landlord could say, on, on, uh, with this knowledge that I would eventually be thrown out of my apartment, I didn't rent you the, the, the second floor apartment. So therefore, uh, you can't uh, ask me to move out of my own apartment. So in Tim Salaim, if you want to say, boy, if you want to say that both of them, both the landlord and the tenant have to live in the same apartment on the first floor. How does the tenant enter the apartment? Does he go through the, the, the front door or does he have to climb to the second floor and then make his way down to the first floor? 
Kishu Mishtamesh, Derek Pesachah Mishtamesh, does he go through the first floor, the way normal, like a, the front door? Oi Derek Gagin Mishtamesh, or does he go in through the roof? In other words, he has to climb up and then go down into the first floor. Me, Amar, does the tenant say, Kidimi Kara, I want it, does the landlord say, you have to be like it the way it was? Mami Kara Derek Gagin, just like you got into your apartment, you had to climb up to the second floor. Hashtanami, so also, even though there is no second floor, you have to, you, Derek Gagin, you first climb to the second floor and then climb down into the first floor. Dilma, or maybe, Patsyamale, he could say to him, Aliyah Kabili Alai, Aliyah Viridi, like Kabili Alai. The tenant will say, You're right. Originally, I was Makabal and myself to go to the second floor and climb to the second floor, but I wasn't Makabal and myself to go up to the second floor and come down. Uh, that that I never accepted upon myself. So therefore, so therefore, um, um, I'm not. I'm not gonna. This is a, a a very hard arrangement for me that I have to climb up, up, and then climb down. So therefore, no, I'm. I have a right to use the the apartment through the front door and come straight into the apartment. In Timson Loima, if you want to say Ali Avalirida Loi Kabili Alai, that he didn't. That we give the right to the tenant to use the front door. Because he wasn't accepting upon himself to go up and then go down. What happened? Stay Aliyah Zua Gavzu. It's a three. It's a three floor apartment. A three floor uh, a building. If his El Yoyna, if the if the if the top top floor became uninhabitable. So then, first of all, Nachis Vedar Betachtoyna. Then. The landlord could say, okay, the top floor is no good. Go live in the middle floor. And it's even better than the middle floor. You don't have to take two flights of stairs. But if his tachtoina, but let's say the second floor became uninhabitable, maula mislik the gamri belyarnik. Can the landlord push him up and say, okay, the second floor is not livable, but you could go now to the third floor apartment. That's empty too. Me, I'm reading to you say, domalei shame aliyah kabbalis alech. Does the landlord tell the tenant, listen, you accepted to live on the upper floor. So instead of the second floor, I'm going to force you now to live on the third floor. Aydilma, oh, but the la the tenant can answer back, Chad I only accept it upon myself to walk up one flight of steps to the second floor. Shtei to go up two flights, loy I didn't accept it upon myself. So you can't force me that uh, to, to, to move up to the third floor. In fact, I have probably better off moving into your apartment. Teku, the Gemara leaves this unresolved. So the Gemara, Rabbi Yisi Rabbi Hatachten, Nisi Nesatikra, the bottom one gives the, the 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 material to make the roof of the of the floor, make the roof of the first floor, which will become the the floor of the second floor. And the the guy who's living on the second floor, he has to provide the plaster to smooth it out. So the Gemara says, my tikra, what is, how do you roof a two-floor building? The in-between roof between the first floor and the second floor. How do you roof it? Uh, you use reeds that are like, like, um, like braided reeds. There, there was a certain uh, material that was a braided reed that provided a support if you walked on the second floor. And that was enough as a roof of the first floor. Ustini Amarishlakish. Stini is the name of a person. And he said in the name of Rishlakish, Levachim, use regular boards, floorboards, like uh, cedar boards, and that's your roof. Veloi Pligi, it's not an argument in, in construction. Marki Asre, Marki Asre. It depends on the, the way constructions. Uh, in Rav Stini, in the name of Rishlakish, they, they, they use Levachim. Rabbi Yaisi Bachanini use Kinim Usnan. So the Gemara says, Hani Bei Tre. There were two people to have a dory, Chad Eloi, Chad Tatoi. One was living on the top floor and one was living on the bottom floor. Maybe they were they owned it. So that's like there was a condominium, one on the top floor, one on the bottom floor. If Chisma Aziva. The Gemara says the, they got a hole in the plaster of the floor. Of the second floor, so Kimoshi Maya Eloi, when he would put water on the floor, Azlu Maskila Tatoi, it would go down and damage the guy on the bottom floor. So who has to fix that plaster? 
Abhiya Baraba Amoha Elyon Visakin. The Rabhiya Baraba says the top guy has to replace it, has to do the repairs. Rabbi Eloi Mishim Rabbi Sim Yaisi Vichoi, I'm Rabshum Rabhiya Barabi Yaisi, I'm Hatachtin Visakin. No, the one that's getting the water sprayed on, uh, he has to fix it. The one on the bottom floor. The Simon, if you want to remember who said what, the Yosef Hurad Mitzrayim. Hurad means the bottom. So Yosef, whoever's who his name is Yosef, and he about Yosef, probably his name was, he was the one that said that the bottom one, the one, one on the bottom has to repair. So let me, let me let us say, maybe they're arguing the same achloikis between Rabbi Yosef and our mission and Rabbonin. Rabbonin say the responsibility to repair the whole, uh, uh, um, uh, the whole thing is um is not is not the one that's doing the damage is the one that is being damaged. So the man the Amu El Yon Misakin that the guy on the top floor has to fix Kesava Ala Mazik Lahache Chesatz Mimenizik. That's like Rabbi Yosi in our Mishnah that uh, the, that he has to provide the plaster because it's he's the Mazik and he has to he has to uh, do protect himself so that he doesn't damage anybody. Uman the Amu Tachta Misakin. And the one that says the bottom one, the one on the bottom floor has to fix, his sovereign, he holds, al hanizik mazik. The one that is is getting damaged, he has to make the protections to fix himself. And therefore, again, in this leak, according to that opinion, it, it, he's being leaked on by the guy upstairs, the guy who's getting leaked on in the bottom floor, he has to do the repairs. So the Gemara says, with Tisbara, can you explain it this way? Rabbi Yaisi Rabbanu Lin in his Zakim Pligi. Are they arguing who has to repair? Is it the Mazik has to do the repair to make the precautions, or the Nizik has to make the precaution? Well, Ibcha Shaminila, we see the opposite opinion in our in another Mishnah. The Tnan we learned in the Mishnah. Marchikin as ilim in a bar eser mechamish ama over charav v'shikma chamishim ama be mumala be minutzad. If a person has a pit that's like a water cistern. And somebody has a tree in the nearby property. He has to distance his his tree twenty five amas, or if it's a box or a sycamore tree, he has to he has to distance it fifty amas from the other person's water system. It doesn't matter whether the water system is a, you know elevated or it's on the same level. Uh, the, the guy in the tree has to make sure that there is a distance between his and his his uh, stuff and the and the pit. Because the roots of his tree can damage the 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 wall of the water cistern. Im habar kodam. So if the water cistern came first, koitzis v'neisus domen, then we force the guy who has the tree to chop the tree down, and the the person with the bar has to pay him for that. Im ha ilan kaidem. But if the tree was there first, lo yekaitz. You don't have to cut it down. Sofik zek kodam zek kodam lo yekaitz. You don't have to cut it down if you're not sure who came first. Oh, but if the the if the bar was first, then we forced the mazik to deal with this. Rabbi Yosi we forced the nizik to deal with this. Even if the pit was there first and the tree came later, you don't have to force the the mazik, of, which is the tree, to force the owner of the tree to cut the tree down. Each one is planting in their own property. So you can't force somebody to, uh, to chop a tree down if he's planting in his property, even though the roots probably are going to damage the bar in the next, the neighbor's property. Um, so we see from over here, Rabbi Yaisi Sava, it's up to the Bala bar to move his bar. Not that the Mazik has to take precautions. Rabbi Son and Savi, Ala Mazik And the Rabban and hold that the Mazik has to has to distance himself. So we see the opposite opinion in that Mishnah of what we would uh, think in our Mishnah. Ela ika il you must say, pligi, pluktid rabbi yeser ban hasen kamim palgin. You're right. The the question of of the of the water leak from the first floor to the from the second floor to the first floor is is dependent on the machlekes rabbi yeser and rabbanan who has to do the repairs. Over there in that Mishnah, regarding who's damaging the pit or not, Rabbi Yosi Rabbanan the Hocha b'Mai Pligi. So Rabbi Yosi and Rabbanan over here, what are they arguing? The Chozik Tikra Komi What's the point of plastering? Why do you put down floorboards? 
And then why do you put a piece of plaster, plaster it over, over on top of that? Why do you need to do that? So it's a machleik is what the purpose of that is. So Rabbi Yonan Savri, Maziva achzuke tikrahu. Achzuke tikra ala takhtun boil achzuke. Rabbi Yonan hold the whole point of plastering it because without plaster, it's very loose, those floorboards. And it could, you know, it, it could become loose, causing the guy on the top floor to fall. Uh, you know, when something gets lodged out of place. So therefore, you put a plaster that holds it all together. So who's that's more of the the concept of it is is to make a better roof. And therefore, the Rabbana hold that the guy on the bottom had, takes full responsibility for that. So he has to do not only the floorboards, but he has to do the plaster as well. Rabbi Yaisi Sava, Rabbi Yaisi says, Maziva Ashvu Egumesu. The point of making a plaster is so it's smooth for the person on top to walk on. It shouldn't be like holes there. And he shouldn't get splinters or whatever it is. That's why we make the top guy pay for that, is because it's he's the one that's being doing actual walking on that. So therefore, it's his responsibility to repair that. Says the Gemara, Amy, it's not so. He asks a question. He's going on Rabkhiya by Yosef who said that when there's a water leak, we say that the taktain has to fix. And we say that he owes like Rabbi Yaisi. But Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi agrees, begira delay, it's the arrows. Even though Rabbi Yaisi says, Alanizik that's only when there's no person there, when it's not a person that's mazik. Like in Elan and Abar, when you plant it, uh, when you plant it, you're not mazikin. When you planted the tree, it's not doing damage right then and there, right? It's only it's it's the point is that it could lead to it could lead to the the, the roots growing and spreading out after time. But if the person himself was throwing chitzim, was throwing arrows at somebody, like by by this case over here, when you're spilling water on somebody's head, even Rabbi Yossi would agree. Uh, Rabbi Yaisi would agree that uh, uh, that you're not a grama ben Nizakin, that you're potter. You're a mazik mamish, and other mood la'olam, and therefore you're you're a, you're a, you should be you should be whether you're you you should always be held responsible to repair. So basically, uh, Rabbi Yaisi would not say that the bottom floor should repair. In this case, with the water leak from the second floor to the first floor, Rabbi Yaisi would agree that it's on the top guy to repair the 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 the, the uh, top guy should be doing the repairs. Answers in Gemara, the Paschi Maya Here we're talking about that it's not a direct damage. You, you drop water on the second floor, it doesn't immediately drop into the first floor. Uh, uh, it, it goes into another place. Let's say it goes off into the corner, and from there it falls down to, the, to, to an area. Water finds a place to where to go. And therefore, since it's not a direct damage, because of that, therefore, Rabbi Yaisi, uh, Rabbi Yaisi would say that the bottom guy should do the repairs. No Mishnah. Look at the Heilige Mishnah. Habayis v'aliyah shashnayim shenaflu. You have a house and two people. One owns the house and one owns the top floor. And they both collapse. The building collapse. So in order to build the second floor, they have to cooperate so that the, the, the bottom floor builds up. And then you can build up the second floor. So he told the guy on the second, the second floor guy told the guy on the first floor, build it up. Who ain't the right to live nice? And he doesn't want to build. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to build. He's not. He, he doesn't need it. So what should the guy on the second floor do? Hare balabayis boynes abayis. He builds the one floor house. Vidar basoichen lives it. And then when the first guy decides he wants to live in that first house, in the first house. He should pay for the for the one floor house, which will give the guy enough money to build the second floor. So that's that's the the din. So Rabbi Yuda has a problem with that because up until that time, till the guy on the bottom floor, the guy on the bottom floor, <laughs> yeah, he's living for free. You're living in your friend's house. Shouldn't you be paying rent? So, but he's not paying rent. He's just building a one floor house, waiting till the guy comes up with money. And then he'll pay for him to build the second floor and he'll move up to the second floor. But during the, all that period of time, he is he's living scot-free. 
in the first floor house, in the in the one floor house that he himself laid out the money to build. Alan, so what's Rabbi Huda's advice? He should, the guy who the guy on the second floor has money, right? So he should build a two floor house. He should build a two floor house. Mikra el Yaina roof the top one, the top, the top two floor house. The Yoishi Babais and live on the first floor, until the other guy comes up with the money. So therefore, in, in that case, in that case, um really the guy on the on the second floor really had a place to where to go. He could have lived on the second floor. But he's living on the first floor to hold out so that the guy who is on the first floor. Doesn't, doesn't doesn't move in without paying for his half of the construction of the house. We'll do one more line in the Gemara. Amar, uh, uh, the Gemara starts off and says, Amar Rabbi Yechinen, Rabbi Yechinen said, B'shalaisha mekaymish shanu lani Rabbi, Rabbi taught us, Asa la'adam she'yahana imamen chaveirai. A person is not allowed to benefit from the, his friend's possessions, uh, until even if the other guy's not losing out any money from that, you know, because he's not losing out, as in our case over here, the guy is living rent free in the first floor apartment, but the other guy had no intention to live there. He didn't even come up with the money to pay for the construction. You're not to benefit from that uh, 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 without his until he gives you permission. And since there, since that's the case, it's called a zenehana bezelichasa, and this is what we're going to discuss tomorrow. Can you benefit from somebody and the other guy is not losing out? Can you benefit from somebody's possession and he's not going to lose out? Do you have to notify him? Uh, do you have to notify him? And that's going to be the discussion. Rabbi Yehuda said this idea three times. Okay, we're going to stop Bez Hashem over here, uh, two two lines from the top of, of Kof Yudzayin of Abayz. Okay, it's a little catch up, but the, the last page of the, of the Masechte is only... As you can see, it's only a half a page, so we'll be able to catch up in Mitzvah. Okay. Yes, thank you. I guess. I guess.